Yes, sir, please. Okay. So, first of all, let me thank Rahul for giving me an opportunity to come because I have been coming here, Raghudandi, because I owe it to IMT. Because one of my gurus who was actually the earlier DDG, Deputy Director General of Climatology, later became the Deputy Director General of Forecasting, he was of IMD and also he was actually the IATM. He used to travel two and a half days all the way from Pune to come to Cochin University to teach us meteorology. Not now, long back. I studied MSc Meteorology in the year 1979 to 81. Okay, long back. So there was a train called JNB at that point of time. And he's a Pakma free. And he started several things actually in IMD what we call the Indian Daily Weather Report. He started the forecasting manual unit. Maybe all of you are young, so you may not be knowing about him, but he has done a number of services. Besides, he's a very good human being. <coughs> he's a one of the most important, very good human being. So I owe it to him a little bit that way. And I also would like to thank a lot of people. I would like to thank Dr. Sadhura, Swapna, he's currently at IATM. Peter Schlusser, he's actually in Germany. Uma Prabhu Deja, he's actually from Goa. Worked for me as a project assistant in lot of work. Sam Shagar, my first PhD student, and the project assistant, Nisanil. Chris is a from South Africa. Dr. Krishnan, he's the executive director of the Climate Change Center Pune. Dr. Shivan and Dapai. There are a number of people. I just put on a few names. So I have a strong and close collaboration actually with the IMP. In fact, during our first cruise to on Sagar Kanya, it actually went from Goa to Kenya, we could identify the tropical eastern region, okay, which was actually discovered by Professor Kodeshwara from Andhra University. So all these things are theory, but we could get the measurements for the first time, unless it's a measurement or observation. We could take that observations from a radio sonde which was operated by the India Meteorological Department paper on board Sagar Kenya and we could get the data. So he was very happy to see such observations over the ocean and we could get a lot of information including the LLJ etc. He was we traveled from here all the way. That time there was no pirates and actually Somalia region. So this was way back in 1983. Okay. So we could do the observations, we could do a lot of observations over the ocean as well as over the atmosphere also, maybe the first time which we have been actually doing. So and this is actually very, very important, the theme ocean, the climate and the weather. Why is it important? Because oceans cover 71% of the world and 90% of the world's <coughs> commercial things go by oceans. Plus about 40 this way, 40% of the people live within the coastal areas for 100 kilometers of the coast. In India itself we can see Calcutta, Mumbai, Cochin, Chennai, everybody is in the coastal area or if you go a little bit in India. So, Coast play an important role, oceans play an important role. In fact, oceans play for the two important things. One is the monsoons, the southwest monsoon or the northeast monsoon or the cyclone, which we talk about. I'll come to that a little bit later. Can you have the next slide? This is actually information I have taken from the assessment report number 5, AR5, we call it IPCC, Inter Government Panel on Climate Change. You can see the top three meters of the ocean hold as much heat as the NDR atmosphere. All of you are meteorologists, so you know that the drop was within the stratosphere, within the mesosphere, but you can see all this stuff. And not only that, 93% of the solar radiation is again trapped into the ocean. The atmosphere does not hold that much as heat. Okay. The atmosphere, I would say, is much more dynamic. Whereas the ocean is a sluggish, it retains and then releases at a different levels or different ages or whatever. I won't go into that, but you can see. Upper ocean, to the top three meters, actually, you can see there are pictures of water. Next slide. Now, why are we not? All the time people ask, why an IMD guy is not able to predict or maybe why an oceanography is not able to predict? The main problem is actually, if you look at the oceanographic observations at various levels, you can see, there is hardly any data about the oceans. Oceans is a major driver for most of the weather phenomena. Because the moisture which we get can come from Arabian Sea or from the Bay of Bengal or from the southern region. This information which we don't have, not only at the surface, at the subsurface also. Next. Now, I hope all of you might have gone actually to a beach, whether Kalangut beach or Miramar beach or Polwa beach or whatever. So if you go to a beach, what time do you get actually a sea breeze or a land breeze? Anyone of you tell me? Land breeze or sea? You tell about sea breeze. Yeah, what time, what time it will come? 
shifting from agriculture into the services sector so each and everything and not only that 60 to 90 percentage of our main annual rainfall for most of the india indians are found in the country so as i said drinking water is important hydroelectric power that's a very important thing plus agriculture because most of the people are shifting now from agriculture into the other service sector okay? and one interesting thing we can see there are lots and lots of rain over here you can see, you have gone to Mumbai with lots of rain, but if you have gone to Pune, you get hardly any rain. Why is it so? You get lots of rainfall, you can answer. Why you get lots of rainfall in Mumbai and less rainfall over Pune? The leeward side. The leeward side. No, let him answer. That Pune line is the leeward side. Okay, excellent. That was the answer I was looking for. Excellent. Now, the same way if you look at 
here we have actually Rajasthan Gujarat area. We have only 10 centimeters. We go along the same latitude that the place called Chirapuji. Now yesterday a couple of days back, people published in current sense that Mausin Ram is the rainiest place anywhere in the world. Mm. Earlier people were calling Chirapuji. Now here a couple of people have actually published that it's a Mausin Ram, not Chirapuji anymore. Yes. Okay. In fact, I always wanted to go Chirapunji or Mohsen Ram in the, when it's in the peak of monsoon. Okay. They get, here we get only 10 centimeters. At the same place, you get 1,000 centimeters of rainfall in one year. Again, why it is so, why you get 1,000 centimeters of rainfall in Chirapunji? Why not less amount of rainfall in Rajasthan? It's an orographic effect. Excellent, excellent. No doubt, Rajasthan also has actually an orographic effect called Arabian Hills. But its orientation is, East West. Here the western parts of Satyagir is actually like this. Here also we have Kasi Jaintia Hills in the Meghalaya. Yes. Nanda itself means Sanskrit means abode of crops or the house of crops. Okay. So this is actually where we have actually Chirapuji and Mosul. So you can see here lots of rainfall from Kerala up to here. That is where we say the monsoon crop is. You can see there are so many features. I won't go into that. Mind you, everything I have taken from IMD. I am giving <laughs> due credit to that. Okay, next. Now, whenever we think of actually a monsoon, each monsoon is like each one of us, unique. For example, 2020 will be different, 2021 will be different, 2019 will be different. Each monsoon is different, at least in three aspects, if not more. One is that the monsoon offset which takes place over Kerala, and then there is an active break cycle and the amount of rainfall. We will go to the one by Next. Next. So there have been several definitions, starting with my own professor Ananda Krishnan, and maybe A.R. Ramakrishna, etc. They said. But then, Dr. P. V. Joseph, is another guru of mine. He was actually the director of writing at IMD. He was at the Cochin University. He was in so many places. A brilliant guy. He has worked in all different aspects of actually meteorology. He has worked in air force, he has worked in radar, he has worked in you name anything. Air sea interaction. So you ask any question, I don't think anybody is better than actually Dr. P. V. Joseph. Currently he is staying in Kerala. A very knowledgeable guy, IMD. He has worked his whole lifetime for IMD. Different branches, like say Air Force or maybe Air Syntax, Training, Satellite Meteorology. Okay. So he made actually a new criteria. He said that the strength and the depth of the monsoon crystal is should be at least up to 600 hectopascal and it should cross 6 meters per second in a very small region. And also another thing what we mentioned was actually pre-monsoon rainfall rate. I won't go into that detail, which is actually too much of science, and also check for the wide spread. This was the only criteria which was done by Professor Ananda Krishnan in the Next slide. Now, how does the monsoon progress? This again is actually taken from IMD, you can see. It starts from Kerala, because Kerala is actually the gateway for the monsoon. It starts from Kerala and slowly covers the entire region support, you can see. It takes so much there. And these are some of the stats. The mean onset is discussed up to the earliest onset is 11 to me, and the most delayed is actually 18 to You can see here itself there is a delay of one month in the standard deviation. This is what I have plotted. You can see there is so much of variability within here. Next. Sir, I have a yeah. question, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, how did we used to detect in the 1918 that the monsoon has come? Say it again, 19? 1918. How we, uh, how we used to detect the monsoon has come at that old time, the hundred years ago. Oh, okay. That's a very good question. 1980. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. In fact, the India Meteorological Department itself was started by the British government way back in 1875 or whatever. Yes. Basically because of famine salt droughts. Okay. So the whole department was started. Maybe you may not have so many observatories like what you are mentioning now. You may not have a Doppler radar or a radio or something. But people did have, at least as a said, there may be a few observatories on. In fact, that day Goa. Goa observatory didn't start on 1961. Prior to that, Portuguese had actually that observation papers. In fact, I have done. Maybe I will show you a couple of slides you can show. 1938 or So people have been doing, taking observations. Maybe the state. You are coming from which state? Delhi. Huh? Delhi, Delhi. Okay. So, Okay, so if you are actually in Kerala, there are actually some three or kingdoms, like say Travangur was there, there was a Cochin, or maybe Tamil Nadu, they have actually. So each of the states, they had their own weather system. In addition to that, the British also needed. Most of the people were, I always make a quote, most of the people are weather-wise, but some people are otherwise. So if you are weather-wise, you survive. So people did take observations, especially the British people. 
they were very much dependent on and they needed the data. And the ships were coming and lot of things were coming. And when weather is needed for each and every day, starting from your bedding, <coughs> you want to have a shania and you want to have a, a outside, if you have a rain, you had it. Somebody wanted to have actually some function in Kambal Parade Ground. A huge exhibition. I said in the peak of monsoon, how can you have? There will be almost any deep water. One meter water will be there in the Punjab uh, Kambal Parade Ground. The August he wanted, I said, you are, you are a fool to start like that. I told him. Now, like that, people asked us questions. Why you need, why you don't need, so each and everything. So people were taking observations. Not necessarily IMD or water. Maybe IMD also, because as I said, IMD started in 1875. One of the oldest sir, is actually a sir, my question was the how they precisely that the monsoon has come uh, it was not three monsoon then. Oh okay. Oh okay, okay, okay. That is basically because see we had a definition by Professor Ananda Krishnan. Okay. So Ananda Krishnan's definition was actually if eleven stations, maybe I'll give it to you later, if there are eleven stations or maybe fourteen stations in Kerala have rainfall of two continuous days. Just watch the previous slide, I'll just show you. Previous. Yeah, this is actually of Joseph. Hmm. Okay. Joseph first time actually had an objective definition. Mm -hmm. Whereas Ananda Krishnan mentioned basically, fairly ba basically because of rainfall. Mm -hmm. So he said if there are 14 stations in Kerala which gets two days consecutive rainfall more than some particular number. Maybe I will come again and again. That's what I was telling. Yes, I'm sir. ready to come free of cost every month or every week if you want. Once in a day. I don't want anything. <laughs> Just come maybe a cup of chai and maybe a <laughs> bottle of water. I can talk and discuss with you. Monsoon for ages because monsoon has been my bread and butter. <laughs> for the last 37 or 38 years or so. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. So, this is, I don't know how many of you remember, in 2013, this was one of the, let us say, the fastest this one. As I said, it takes, just go to the previous slide, it takes about 45 days, starting from 1st of June to here, it takes 45 days for the monsoon to cover the India in the subcontinent. But every year does not go the same way. Some years it goes fast, some, we call it hiatus in months. Okay, next slide. In the year 2013, the monsoon covered the entire Indian subcontinent 16 days, 160. It went very fast. That was the year when we had the Uttarakhand floods. Kedarna, etc., you have heard about. Mm -hmm. So there are several things. Don't think that each, that's what I said, each monsoon is like each one of us. Different, unique in several aspects. This three important aspect is monsoon onset, active break cycles, and the amount of rain. You can see by 16th of uh, this one, whereas usually 16th of uh, June it covered, that means rain is actually 15th of July. Next. And there was another year, that was the year 2002, which was one of the first drought year. In this particular year, it took almost 76 days. So one year covered in 16 days, and then it took 76 days. 76 means almost 15th of August. More than half of it. June is over, July is over, 15th of August only is covering here. Let's see, 15th of August. Where will you get? And mind you, these are the areas of Rajasthan and Gujarat. And there is a funny thing that actual onset took place on the one day ahead. Exactly, yes, you can see. So, what you said is true. And this is the worst crowd years of 2002. Lot of studies have been done and people have been trying to predict. So, imagine. Within them, this one covers so much rainfall. One is within 16 days it covers, and it takes 76 days also to cover. Within the mean onset date of 15th of July. Next, and this was the last year. So basically, you can see last year of was also okay. I won't go into the details. Next, another interesting thing is actually people are <coughs> now they have changed onset dates have been withdrawn. Then uh, IMD has actually changed. I think Shivananda Pai and maybe Rajiv they have actually done a lot of things. They have changed. Because the withdrawal of monsoon. Last year, for example, the withdrawal of the southwest monsoon and the onset of northeast monsoon almost coincided, we can see. The same time with withdrawal, and actually, there are a lot of people who work like the Dr. Vaiye a lot of people are actually from IMB Chennai or Regional Medicine of Chennai. They are working on that. Next. This is just to show you the monsoon onset of Kerala, the percentage of long period average, and the monsoon withdrawal. You can see the monsoon withdrawal is actually. And maybe last year also it was actually 16th of October or what could be given. Just to show you that withdrawal also is actually remember this plays a very very important role of the And that puts pressure on the IMD people. Everybody, every day, Paul Fernandez will ask Rahul, or maybe Nita Sai will ask Rahul, when it is withdrawing, what is happening? This people keep on asking questions. 
They can just sit and ask, or maybe Paggy also will ask them what is happening. <laughs> See, but then I will tell you, without that, uh, we cannot mention it. Whether it's Rahul or Ramesh Kumar or P.V. Joseph or Gustav, you need scientific collected data. Whether it's from the Doppler weather data or from the radius of the data or the surface of the Without that, if uh, Rahul says something, he will be able to put to task. Or me also will be put. No, it's a serious thing. Okay, next. Now, this is actually, how does the thing start? See, basically, we have a strong convention. This is actually the problem. Again, from the author of the You can see this was published in the North Carolina of Climate Geology. About eight Pendar. Pendar is actually a five-day meal. I won't go into the details. So, south part of actually, or equivalent region of actually, we have Pendar, we get actually a lot of convention. It shifts actually in the South China Sea, again comes out to the Arabian Sea, and this is what actually the problem is during the monsoon onset pendulum. So there is actually seesaw in convection. This was actually first uh, study by Dr. P. V. Joseph, not in this paper, prior to this, which was actually subsequently carried out by Dr. Rajiv and Dr. <coughs> Dr. So this also is actually a very interesting thing. Next. Can we predict the monsoon onset? This is a billion dollar question. This party will be interested, I will be interested, Dr. Kim will be interested. Because this is important from the growing point of view, from the lot of agriculture point of view. Then we start seeding, drinking water point of view. Because actually there are a lot of tanker mafias, I put it that way. Whether it's a Goa, relatively it is less. But in places like say Mumbai or Pune or maybe Bangalore, the tanker lobby is actually playing a very important role. Yesterday was actually World Water Day. Water we don't know or bother or don't care about. Drinking water is a huge problem in lower parts of Goa, especially in places like say Gujarat, Rajasthan, etc. Anyway, we don't do that. So, can we tell when in and So, there was a study done by Professor P.V. Joseph and P.V. Pillai from India Media. I always quote IMD people because they have been my front runners and this one. So, Joseph and Pillai did a work using some subdivisional rainfall data. But I am a great fan of actually remotely sensed data. You can see, we use actually a satellite data called GPCP, which actually gives lots of rainfall data, and this is what we do. But I will stop a small minute here and show a small movie, just to minimize it. Because mm -hmm. I wanted to show you the difference between the <coughs> Just minimize it again. You can just, yeah, just play this. Another one, this one, yeah. Just play. Just wanted to show you the difference. Lot of people misunderstand what is weather, what is climate. Just watch this movie. It's a small cartoon movie. Mm -hmm. I think some connection problem. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. loose button. Mm -hmm. Some loose button. Mm -hmm. Some loose button. The sunniest day so far this summer. No way it's gonna rain. For Could it be a nicer day for a hike? I don't know what you're bringing all that stuff for. Hey, you never know when the weather's gonna change. Gotta be prepared. RJ, it's like the sunniest day so far this summer. No way it's gonna rain. For right now it's sunny. But I'm telling you, weather is the condition of the outside air or atmosphere at a particular time and place. It can change quickly. Ever hear of braving the elements? I think so. Well, it means the elements of weather. Air temperature, air pressure, humidity, wind, clouds and fog, and precipitation like rain, snow, and hail, those are all elements of weather. RJ, I really don't think the weather's going to change right now. Oh, yeah? I'm willing to bet you that two elements of weather are about to change as we hike up this hill. <laughs> I'll take that bet. What's going to change in five minutes? How about temperature and air pressure? Even though it's sunny, the temperature of the air can still change. As we hike up the hill, it's going to get cooler because we'll be at a higher altitude or elevation. The higher we go, the cooler the air is and the higher the air pressure. How much cooler can it get? Well, this hill isn't very high so it won't get much colder. But if we were hiking something like Mount Everest, we'd be talking about seriously freezing temperatures. Whoa, so the higher we climb, the colder the air temperature? Yep, and as we climb, it's gonna get windier too. Cool air is heavier than warm air, and it sinks. As it sinks, it gets warmer. 
warm air rises back up again. When air sinks and rises like that, it causes winds. The higher we hike, the cooler and heavier the air is, and the faster it sinks. And the faster air sinks, the faster the wind blows? You got it. Eh, so it gets a little cold and my hair gets messed up. I can handle it. Okay, then what if it rains? Rain? The climate is very nice today. Sam, climate has to do with the usual kind of weather in a certain place over time, not on a particular day. Check it out. There are different climate zones all over the world. The main differences between each climate zone are precipitation and temperature, and those two things make the plant and animal life of each climate different. Climate is the overall weather pattern of those two elements in a certain area over time. So weather changes day to day, but climate has to do with the big picture. And the weather today is picture perfect. It is a warm sunny day, but this heat means more moisture is being evaporated into the warm air. As that warm air rises higher, it cools, and that moisture turns back into droplets of water. When that happens, clouds form. But clouds can't hurt us. They're big, fluffy puffs of air. They're big, fluffy puffs of cold air, ready to burst with rain. You seem to know a lot about the weather today, RJ. Did you watch the weather on the news or something? I always check the weather. That weather guy is called a meteorologist, and his job is really important. Meteorologists study weather patterns to try to predict future weather. Who needs a meteorologist when I have you? <laughs> I think I felt a drop. It did not. Come on. You have to be kidding me. What I tell you? You told me, all right. Weather describes the condition of the outside air of a place at a certain time. And at this certain time, it's raining. But like you said, many factors affect changes in weather. Weather changes every day, and climate describes the weather of a place over time. Climate zones explain weather patterns and plant and animal life of particular areas. And I think we should move to a climate where it never rains. Aw, oh, come on. A little rain never hurt anybody. Lucky for you, I brought an extra raincoat. Thanks. I guess we can still hike, thanks to all your rain gear. But how am I supposed to paint? Watercolor? <laughs> a very small movie, just wanted to show you because a lot of people without knowing the difference between weather and climate use it interchangeably. So I thought, especially for the school children I used to show, where the elders also don't understand, so it's better to so just minimize it and go to the top again. See, I was, I was just mentioning that why this is a very important thing. So I, as I said, this was actually a work done by me long back and it was published actually in Geoscience and Remote Sensing Letters. Can you make the slide? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So, people are keen, as I mentioned, people have been doing it. Lot of people. Every year, lot of people actually start predicting monsoon concept. Uh, one is, uh, my professor, T.B. Joseph always mentions, he does almost one month in advance. Always he tells about a person of the Hindu business line of economic times. He tells one journalist called Vincent Pujet. He tells, I am also into predicting business. I also predict, Professor Joseph predicts one baby sign. Earlier he was actually at the Space Application Center of Malabar. Now he is currently in the zoo. He also predicts. India Meteorological Department predicts. Uh, we have actually a lot of institutions which predict. So people are actually very important. So, the parameter which I have been using is actually pre monsoon rainfall peak, which we get about six weeks in advance from the five and last in advance, not really, and last. Next slide. And further that your study, we also said rains don't come like that. We get huge amount of rainfall for the rainfall to come. In fact, I was just mentioning to Paji just now. People knew long back. In fact, I would say the first forecast of monsoon was actually Kalitas. Whether you like it or not. He wrote in a book called Meghaduda or Meghasandesha, which he sent or told to his, uh, let's say, fiancé or whatever he told, that Ashada the Pradhamma Divsi. On one first day of the month of Ashada, a cloud will come in a place called Ramnagar. So, I, mean, I think he may be the first meteorologist or may the first forecaster where he could correctly tell that that particular cloud comes. 
substantive unit was done by Sikha and Gartje. They had actually a paper in a journal called Monthly Weather Review. How does the IT is that you in the proper convergence of so, This also on clouds also you could talk about. In addition to that, there is a mention of monsoon even in Valmiki Raman. I'll, I'll go to that later. First time they are talking about the ocean atmosphere coupling. It's a PR Pishardi was actually the IMD, this one as well as the IATM director, as well as the physical research director. You know, they always used to start any topic that Sanskrit story, where they showed that ocean and atmosphere are intercoupled. And as we are correctly showing, most of the moisture from the ocean goes into the atmosphere, stays there for nine months and delivers it as rain. It was actually a very nice Sanskrit story. Yeah, I unfortunately didn't have that, but then I want to tell you. So, people were knowing the role of the ocean. I never knew about the role of the ocean till I came into NIF. I was doing my MR master's in meteorology. I thought everything is done purely with atmosphere only. I never knew the role of oceans till I came here. So I said, okay, oceans does play a role. Because I was coming from a small village or whatever. So the amount of moisture is almost 40 to 45 days in India, uh, let's say peninsula of India. It's actually about equated 50 degrees north and 95 degrees east. That belt is actually so much of rainfall. Prior to our study, there was a study done by Professor UC Mohanty, who is actually the IIT director, the BS, as now currently is in Bhubaneswar. He has also done a study, he is actually another uh, scientist from UC. Next slide. Next slide. This was again done by a scientist called Ram Murthy, who was actually, I would say, a student of our another mission. These are all published in forecasting manual units of IIT. And all these things are readily available. So if you look at from 1st of June up to 30th of September, every day it does not rain the same way. Some days it rains like hell or maybe what we call active monsoon conditions. Some days there is hardly any rainfall. So this is actually a picture of actually a break in monsoon condition. You can see. Except Tamil Nadu and the foothills of Himalayas, there is hardly any rainfall. So I won't go into the details next time. Now, what role does the oceans play? So this is actually a study done by me and so on now. If there is a strong convection over the Bay of Bengal, the monsoon current, when I say monsoon current, it's called atmosphere. It will go into the peninsula area and we get active monsoon conditions. The colors are actually what we call outgoing long-wave radiation and the winds are actually at the height of about 1.5, what we call yellow elevation. So when we have a convection or a depression or a low over the Bay of Bengal, we have actually an active monsoon condition. When the convection shifts from Bay of Bengal to the equatorial region, then we have actually the monsoon current which should have gone into the peninsula and it avoids it and they get lots of rainfall over the equatorial region. But this is not good. We want rainfall over India, we want rainfall over Goa or maybe Telangana or Bangla, etc. Because there is no point actually, no doubt it will have oceanography because the salinity of that area will change and a lot of things will change. But how having rains over here is actually bad. So this is the first time we had actually shown along with Sopna. This was published way back in 2002. Next. There have been several definitions. So this was again along with a student of mine, Umar Prabhu Deshai, currently she is in New York. Everybody has their own definition. Rajavin will have one definition. Professor Joseph and Gart will have another definition. Uh, Shivananda Pai or uh, Rajavin and other group have actually different definitions. IMT has their own definition. So we said, we have actually the peak monsoon months of July and August and the delayed onset can actually create a problem or so there have been some, I won't go into the details but most important thing is actually they are 2002 we have 34 days of consecutive days that is a very very dangerous this remember whereas in the year uh, 1908 there was hardly any break so there are two extremes one is actually we didn't have any break and in the year 2002 we have actually 34 days of one, one of the most long breaks of actually the entire TV, uh, monsoon system of consecutively 34 days when the rainfall was less than 9 millimeters of water of the entire region. I won't go into the details And this is the study again. I have taken from India Meteorological Department, uh, Rajivan as well as Gargil and Dr. KFC. They consider this as a whole monsoon zone with the Rajasthan here and all these areas here. This is what they take for the uh, then for climate also you can see next. And this is for the year, last year. Last year uh, we didn't have much of a problem, no doubt. We more or less covered everything here, you can see. This is the pattern for the Indian monsoon system. No 
okay, mind you, it's such a one meter of rainfall, also it is not distributed. So, this is something which we should keep in mind. Okay. So, it is vice versa also. This was actually studied done by Dr. P.B. Joseph and my own professor, Anandya Krishna has actually done, both here as well as in Calcutta and Dhamma. Next. There was another study, subsequently this done by Professor B.N. Goswami, who was earlier at Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, later he came to IITM, Pune as a director, now currently he is actually in Assam. What he said was actually, he studied the central India rainfall. Next. His study showed that the low and the moderate event, where the rainfall is less than uh, 10 centimeters, they are showing a decreasing, but whereas the heavy rainfall event, rainfall which is more than 10 centimeters, they are showing an increasing trend. And very, very heavy rainfall event, which are more than 50 centimeters, these two are showing an increasing trend. This is actually a very positive. This is what I wanted to tell you. I will explain that in a very simple fashion. Every day you have your breakfast, you have your 11 o'clock tea, then you have your lunch, you have your evening tea, again you have your dinner. So this is what an ordinary human being will have. Just imagine one day this one or maybe one week or maybe one month, like Anna Hazari. Anna Hazari does usually do Kata. For several days they don't do anything. Just imagine if you don't eat it for a long period. Just imagine 7 days rainfall or 10 days rainfall or 1 month rainfall falling on one particular day. This is a very, very dangerous thing. This is what I want to do. 1 month rainfall or 10 days rainfall or 15 days rainfall falling on one day. The rest of the days we don't have anything. Again there will be another intense rainfall. Several days nothing. Another so This is actually very, very dangerous. This will upset the whole drinking water problem, agriculture problem, everything will be upset. We are not like Boomba Gavna who can eat for six months and sleep for six months. I am just telling an example. No, these are serious things which people don't know. We need our breakfast, lunch and dinner at regular window. Same is the case. There should be a spatial and temporal variation of rainfall which should be equitably distributed. Then only the monsoon will be good. In some place, for example, we had floods in Kerala in 2018. 2019, we had actually again floods. It's a very, very dangerous thing. I was actually in a place very close to that place, Alibi. And here area was flooded in Kerala, 2018. We just reached in time in Alibi because so many railways, these ones were actually submerged. This ones, they opened 50 dams, 50 dams, almost simultaneously. So, and number of issues. And most of the people never believed IMD. My friend or colleague was actually a so they were, he was actually sitting in IMT and he gave a focus. Nobody believed him. And people were asked not to believe but anyway, damn. But people, as he was carefully mentioned, they never believed. Uh, again, I will say, if either you should be weather-wise or otherwise. So they suffered. A lot of people did suffer. Even though IMT correctly gave the focus. The people, IMT correctly gave the focus. Not only this, even for the cyclones. Next slide. Next. Now there are several things. Now people ask, they want actually the rainfall of Goa, rainfall of India, etc. But there are things which are happening elsewhere. Like this is actually what we call the Pacific Ocean. Pacific Ocean have a phenomena what we call El Nino. El Nino is actually a very, very important phenomena which actually you can see when they have a warming over them. Especially in the eastern Pacific near the Peru coast. Opposite of El Nino is what we call La Nina, just opposite. And this is the normal condition. This is actually what we call a Walker separation. I won't go into the details. Maybe you can uh, do anything. And there is another term which was actually made by a gentleman called Ashok Karmore. Again, he is from IATM, currently he is from the University of Hyderabad. Ashok Karmore, who is actually called El Nino Modoki. I won't go to that place. Next. So, this is what usually happens. And during a Modoki year, we are actually splitting up of the water cells. This is actually dangerous. And from the oceanographic point of view, we have actually lots of changes including the thermal effect. Next. Another phenomenon which was actually discovered again by Professor Goswami and his student Sajee Hamid, PN Manager and Yamagata. It's what we call the Indian Ocean Typhoon. It's a very, very important thing. Again, it was uh, published in Nature. So you can see, there is actually a strong thing which is happening near this area. Uh, Sumatra, Java, or let us say this, Indonesian islands. They have a cooling over here and they bomb over here. This will change. This is what we call a positive Indian Ocean Typhoon. Just the opposite is what we call a negative Indian Ocean Typhoon. People say this is actually tied with the arena, I won't go into the details next.
So this is again by Joseph. Again using the IM data, as I can see. We have a 30 year cycle. Wet, dry, wet, dry. So 1990 to 2020, it's already, we are actually 2021. This should have been actually a wet. But it didn't happen that way. So we can call it a 60 year cycle. So wet to dry, wet to dry. So basically we assume that it actually should have been wet. But it didn't happen as wet. Next slide. You can say 1990 to 99 was okay, there was no drought. But if you look at 2000 to 2009, 2002 was a drought, 4 was a drought, 9 was a drought, 14 was a drought, 15 was a drought. So there are several droughts in this decade. Just go back to the previous slide. So again, just dry, dry almost. So people have been attributing it to this climate change. Anyway, I won't say every, each and everything is climate change. <coughs> I won't blame it on climate change, but things are changing. I think that next. Yeah, next. Another important thing is actually what you call the monsoon depression, which form a great in their subcon. This is actually studied in the last hundred years, it was like this. First 50 years, the next 20 years, next 20 years. Again, by Gopal Kapta and Rajiva. They looked at the 100 years of rainbow data. Again, I think it's actually still in IMD. Dr. Kapta is still in IMD. And this is actually Dr. Rajiv, and he's the second person in the of our census. This is student, you can see. Kerala is actually in IMD. Luckily, we are in Goa. We are perfectly perfect. You don't have a much of a problem. But there are several areas. Huh? You can ask us. Huh? North is a deficit terrain. Huh? North is a deficit terrain. Exactly. You can see, basically, you can see this area, let's say Orissa. This we can attribute it to the, just go to the previous slide, which actually shows the number of depressions which are increasing. Mm -hmm. But why Kerala rainfall is decreasing, we don't know. But there was actually a study studied by one Dr. K. Rajendra, he is from CMAX, we call it the CSAR 4 PI. He has been studying along with the Kerala government. So this is a decrease, but measure to the peninsula of India, as you correctly said, but this area is actually having a serious problem. This I would attribute to the Decreasing of the monsoon depressions or water. Next. This is for the last year. I won't go into the details. Next. So this is again by Dr. Dhruv Kumar, who was actually earlier at the IATM when he went to the uh, World Climate Research Program. So each and everything we cannot attribute to El Nino. You can see there were 11 deficit years when there was El Nino, but there were 11 years when there was no El Nino. Also there was deficit. Out of 131 years, you can see. Each and everything you can have to attribute to Elina. Whereas Lanina is a sure bet for actually normal or excess rainfall. You can say normal or excess rainfall is actually Lanina. So I would say this year, for example, people have been asking. Somebody was asking some of January or February what will be for summer and what will be for monsoon. I said, they say Lanina neutral conditions. Only one person, I think, when some US officers actually said that maybe the Lanina may contain more water. Next. So this is the this one. I'll just go a little bit. I have some 10-15 minutes more? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So basically I wanted to say the sea surface temperature of the eastern equivalent has been increased substantially. The tropical is still on a decreasing trend, monsoon depressions. So again, I wanted to highlight that the oceans play a very, very important role. Okay? And especially the prolonged Next slide. Now all the people have actually been really worried about this. Dr. Bajadara. If you come to NIO, we had actually a cyclone detection radar. It is actually the top. I always used to take the people in the top, show them the antenna and go there and it was a very nice location. That was only radar. In fact, I will just show you the next slide. Yes. And they are called by different names in different places. In the Indian Ocean, they are called cyclones. In the Pacific Ocean, they are called uh, typhoons. In the Atlantic Ocean, they are called hurricanes. And we get about three to four times more than uh, cyclones in the Bay of Bengal as compared to Arabian Sea. And this area is the northwest Pacific, is actually the higher region of the cyclones, and southern Atlantic Ocean, you don't Next. Now, how do we observe a cyclone? This is a very, very important. As you are asking me about the monsoon, how do you know? Earlier, people know only an unless and hit a coast. We call it Paradise cyclone or Maxi Patnam cyclone. Until and unless it hit, we don't know. Because we didn't have any data about the ocean. So the cyclones are originated out of the ocean. So till satellite came, for example, Kinsat came or Geosat came, all these things came, then only we knew about this how things happened that And we need five geostationary satellites, not all of the satellites, five geostationary satellites are needed uh, to look into that. Okay? Next. And this is the network. The first is actually at NIO. Now we actually have a gap. 
we needed only four. Whereas in this course, we needed more because we had actually more and more cycles. So we had actually this over here, and uh, we have much all already. All these places now have a couple of other different places. And there are two seasons when the cyclones fall. One is actually the pre monsoon season, March to May, and the post monsoon season, October to December. So these are the times which they fall. Next. And again, all these are from IMD only. So we have actually super cyclones. And there are several parameters. My second student, Sham uh, Sumesh, did his actually PhD on the cyclogenesis parameters. So some of the parameters which are needed for the cyclone is low level vorticity, inverse of the vertical shear should be minimum, ocean, oceans play an important role. So this one and cyclone heat potential. Next. In 2019, I had actually a nice story prepared along with the Ford Fernandez. We got year of the cyclones. We had eight cyclones with five of them forming in the RA very very dangerous thing, imagine, 5 seconds in 1 year or other is unimaginable. Again, I don't want to blame it on climate change or water, but then things have been used. And 2 seconds were actually occurring simultaneously. Yeah. Kya yeah. and Mama. They were simultaneously the okay. speed. So you can see, the peak classification, the sustained wind speed, yeah, the yeah. damage which they have caused, and 2 seconds yeah. simultaneously yeah. occurring in the RA basis, unimaginable or unheard of. So we had a series of articles both in the impacts of India and maybe other journals also. Mm -hmm. And you can see the minimum pressure also you can see when you have this. Yeah, I actually remember this. 950 hectopascals in the eye of the cycle. Mm -hmm. There are several nice movies. I think maybe you should watch that in the US. So the next There's the same thing in a pictorial form you can see. Five forming over there and three forming over there. Like Lynn Pine said, even the North Indian Ocean and NIO, what? National Sea of Oceanography in North Indian Ocean. <laughs> it's actually North Indian Ocean, not National Sea of Oceanography. You can see five forming. And remember, that was the year when Roma had lots of rain. Even in the months of October and November, lots of things had actually happened. September, October, even in November, we had been settling bad. If you just go to the previous slide, you can see November, November, November. This had actually, in fact, when Victor Hugo bombs, it was actually a museum that it was flooded with a lot of traditional things. Also. This is a very, very dangerous thing. Next. Just to show you, actually, in the Arabian same way, you can see this can parallel. Next. Again, you can see it. Next. Now, what will happen in future? This is actually something which we were in the same. So, again, one of my students, Gobika. She did a study. I said that I don't believe actually this global warming or climate change, etc. But what she told me was actually, we will just do an analysis of what will happen in the future. So, this is actually I wanted to show you. This is what is presently happening, okay? Or maybe it's actually for 1871 to 2016, not happening presently. But what will happen in the future? Next. Next. This will happen in the year 2099. In 2099, this entire uh, Western Indian Ocean and Arabian Sea will form. This again was published actually in Colonial Dynamics. So basically, we wanted to see this is actually a dangerous thing. From the cyclone point of view, even from the fisheries point of view. I don't know how many of you fish, but if you are a fish eater, you have tremendous information. The fishes in Kerala coast or Tamil Nadu coast will actually go to cooler areas or maybe they may die down or they may do uh, subsurface waters because you cannot survive. Just, I will take you and put you outside, you will sweat. So well, I try to go under a tree or you will try to go under a fan. Ideally, will I try to go into an ACO. Same is the case actually with the fishes. Fishes will also try to migrate into the cooler waters or whatever. So whatever happens on this area, Kerala and Tamil Nadu, they migrate or they may the cooler areas like the command of migration and Next. Next. This was another study which we had done along with Dr. Uh, A.S. Unni Krishna. He is actually a Nobel Prize laureate. He was actually a general. He worked on sea level along with Al Gore and Pachori. So we wanted to have a look. Is the number of cyclones increasing? Will the intensity increase? So this is something which we wanted to look at. And I had also gone to a place in Greece called Corfu Island along with a lot of 
cyclone people to say how does the cyclone thing next so this is actually along the communication what we did was actually we had a control one 1990 in there and that is this one you can see what will happen in future that can be 50 next one. so you can see this study clearly show the doubling of greenhouse gases can anyone of you tell me what are the various greenhouse gases past you have a rapid fire question ಗ್ರೀನ್ಹೌಸ್ಟ್ I have a slide which is very clearly shows that there is a particle of matter, the earth will remain cool. But if there are greenhouse gases, the earth will remain warm. Not only warm, they will remain in the atmosphere for 100 years. Please remember, one is actually, they will remain in the air. So, atmosphere will have actually nitrogen, 78, oxygen, 21, argon and then all this minor gas or trace gas. But if the minor gas or trace gas starts increasing, and they stay in the atmosphere for a long period of time. That can have tremendous repercussions for our children. Not for you, if your children or grandchildren will have a problem. That is why we always blame it actually on the Americans. Americans will say, I didn't do it. My father did it. They call it, they call it hysteric emissions. And they hundred years old. There are so many politics, I won't go into that. Next slide. This actually which very clearly shows the control as the greenhouse system. Next slide. What will happen in the future? This is actually the controlled one. If you are anybody from Orissa, you can see most of the cyclones come. In future also it comes here. You can see more and more. This is actually for 2050. Then from the communication city. Next. I think I will stop here. If you have it, I will show one more small movie on clouds. How to distinguish? I don't know how people distinguish. The, just a small, this one, a tutorial on clouds. Yeah, that one. Just play it. So we find this movies. Then I will ask this one. Clouds are an ever-changing aspect of weather. And clouds can often be a great visual indicator of certain weather patterns, and they can even act as a harbinger of upcoming weather conditions. In this brief weather tutorial, we will discuss four primary types of clouds, as well as some combinations or hybrids within these categories. We'll show some specific examples of each, and we'll also uh, look at some of the weather elements associated with these different cloud types. Clouds are categorized by their structural characteristics and the height in the atmosphere at which they develop. The four main forms of clouds that we'll talk about are cirriform, cumuliform, stratoform, and nimboform. Uh, there can be different combinations or hybrids of each of these cloud types. Cirrus clouds are high-level clouds that typically form between 16,000 and about 50,000 feet above the Earth's surface. And the Latin word cirro means curl of hair, and many times cirrus clouds can mimic curls of hair due to the thin, wispy structure that they exhibit. Cirro can also be used as a prefix uh, to describe high-level clouds. Cirrus clouds are composed of tiny ice crystals suspended in the upper parts of the troposphere, which is the layer of the atmosphere where all weather occurs. And cirrus clouds are often thought of as indirect indicators of weather patterns. Uh, sometimes they may accompany a strong jet stream in the upper atmosphere. And cirrus clouds can also be seen preceding surface fronts by more than a day or two. Cumulus clouds might be one of the more recognizable cloud types. Cumulo is Latin for heap or pile. And cumulus clouds can often look detached or isolated from other clouds and they'll often appear as fluffy white cotton balls or perhaps even cauliflower. These clouds are considered low-level clouds usually forming between a few hundred to a few thousand feet above the Earth's surface. In the desert southwest and much of New Mexico these cloud bases will often form at even higher levels than other parts of the country due to the warm and arid conditions within the southwest. Stratiform clouds, or layer clouds, often appear as a sheet or layer of cloud that exhibits little definition or features. In other words, uh, they will typically appear as a hazy white or gray mass. 
Stratus clouds are primarily thought of as low clouds, uh, but they can also be observed in the middle to upper parts of the atmosphere as well. Mid-level stratus clouds are referred to as altostratus, and high-level stratus clouds are commonly identified as cirrostratus. Nimble form clouds are also representative of a hybrid or combination of different cloud categories. Nimbo is Latin for rain. The two common nimbo form cloud types are nimbo stratus and cumulonimbus. As you can probably guess, nimbo stratus are layered clouds producing rain or precipitation. These clouds can extend into the middle to upper parts of the troposphere, but they are typically only seen in the lower parts since they will usually obscure any clouds above. Cumulonimbus are also a unique hybrid of cloud that extends from the lower to the upper parts of the troposphere and are otherwise known as thunderstorm clouds. We briefly mentioned cirrostratus, but another high-level cloud is cirrocumulus. These are similar to altocumulus, the difference being that altocumulus form in the mid-levels of the troposphere, while cirrocumulus clouds are in the highest part of the troposphere. Altocumulus clouds have some variations of their own. One such variation that frequents New Mexico is the altocumulus standing lenticular, sometimes simply referred to as lenticular, linies, or even wave clouds. These clouds are common on the leeward side of topographical barriers, such as mountains, where a stable layer of air is then found above the crest or peaks of the topography. Stratocumulus clouds are another combination of two previously mentioned categories, stratus and cumulus. So we've discussed several types of clouds. We hope that you've learned something about clouds and maybe you can scan the skies next time you step outside and uh, identify some cloud types on your own. For more information, refer to the National Weather Service including the Jetstream website where you can learn more about clouds and see more cloud diagrams and imagery. So, I think I will stop here. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Not that I know all the answers, but at least I will try to understand. Maybe Pakistan can start. The question will be very bad. No problem, no problem. Gracias.